So Midnight Club starts with us minding our own business when this random asshole rides up alongside us, disses our ride, and then challenges us to a race. We're not going to let him get away with that. We're going to chase his ass down and then, uh, I'm not sure what, but we're going to chase his ass down. Anyway, for the first chase of the game, this can seem kind of intimidating. We did have to drive right under two trailers back there and cut across some grass, but really, it's pretty simple considering how slow both you and Emilio move at this point in the game. Really, the biggest hazard is the, uh, the pedestrian traffic, not any of the turns. Try to avoid taking any head-on collisions. This is the second mandatory race in the game and acts as a gateway into the non-linear aspects. We want to stay on the outside of this big group of cars because if we bump into them too much we'll slow down too much and we might as well start the race over. Staying on the outside will allow us to gain a lead on them fairly easily assuming we can avoid pedestrian traffic. After we gain a lead it's as simple as... As I was saying, after we gain the lead, it's mostly a straight shot with very simple deviations depending on pedestrian traffic and then one big turn over to the right that leads into a jump at the very end. The jump is a rock and we have to hit the rock just right or we goof ourselves up. You was lucky! Yo yo, here's my number, Papo. Call me when you wanna race head to head. So from here we have a couple of options, we can call Emilio to race him head to head, one on one, and win some of his cars, or he can cruise for some action in New York City, which will allow us to find group races which will advance the story. We're gonna cruise for some action so you can see what the non-linear aspects of the game look like, and so you can get a better taste of the game's personality. Yo, I'm Emilio Sanchez from Uptown, baby. Hold on to your seat. I'm Keiko Hatano, the hottie behind the wheel. I like to drive very fast. I'm Larry Muller. I'm Larry Muller. They don't mess with me in Queens. So now that we're dumped into New York City, you see three red, uh, red arrows on the map. Those red arrows are hookmen and we have to chase them down and follow them to get the group races which will advance the story. Chasing down the Hookmen is arguably the most unique and the most frustrating part of Midnight Club. They don't really give you a tutorial on how it works, but it becomes fairly obvious after you spend a bit of time doing it. When you get close enough to one of the Hookmen, their arrow turns yellow instead of red, and you have to keep their arrow yellow long enough for it to turn green. When it turns green, they're going to start leading you to the next group race and you have to keep up with them. If you get too far away, the arrow will turn red again and you'll have to chase them back down. Right now we're chasing after Emilio because he is the easiest to catch. He's also the easiest racer in the game in general. The problem with chasing down the Hookman is that, well, the AI in this game is incredibly fallible. This is a positive when you're challenging them in actual races, because having AI that's just as prone to mistakes as the player makes the races feel a lot more organic and enjoyable. But when you're trying to follow them, their stupid mistakes can be... a detriment. You shouldn't be punished when the AI screws up while leading you to the group race, but you can be. Because outside of the actual races, the acceleration speed seems to have... You see what I mean? Like, if I didn't already know which direction Emilio was going, which I do because I played this before, I would have no idea what was going on. He was supposed to be leading me to a group race and then he smashed into a fucking wall. But yeah, uh, the AI, its acceleration speed outside of actual races when you're chasing them down in the city is incredibly exaggerated as you can see. They accelerate much too quickly and stop much too suddenly, which makes it incredibly difficult to follow them. It feels like you're being punished for the AI being a complete moron. 
So while chasing down the Hookman so they'll lead you to group races seems like a really fun idea, in practice it's kind of frustrating and is easily my least favorite part of the game. You'll frequently run into situations where one of the Hookmen will smash into a wall so you slow down to wait for them and then as soon as they start going again they go from 0 to 100 in 3 seconds and you have no hope of catching back up. It becomes less of a problem when one of the secondary game mechanics kicks in, but for now it's really annoying. That's not to say it isn't annoying later too, it's just less so. So this is where group races first start to show their true form. You may have noticed that not all of the racers went in the same direction this time, and that's because all of the yellow checkpoints can technically be gotten in any order. Generally though, the order that the red car goes in, that being Emilio, is the one you want to take. The most interesting thing about the game's normal races is that every race is non-linear like this. You simply have to collect all the yellow checkpoints and then head straight for the green checkpoint after all the yellow checkpoints are collected. It's kind of like a really weird version of Pac-Man. In the longer races, you're also allowed to screw up a bit more because the AI's chances of also screwing up are much higher. See, we got bumped quite a bit there, and if that were to happen in some of the earlier races that you saw, we would simply restart because we wouldn't be able to recover. But since this race is a bit longer, the AI also has a fair share of time to goof up. And here's a demonstration. Yep, there he goes. Now, whether you actually win any of these races comes down to three factors. How well you take corners, how fast you move down straightways, and what car you're currently using. Now, depending on what playstyle you favor, your strategies can vary. For example, I rely on taking corners better than the AI in order to succeed. What, you call that fair? I got all kinds of heat on my tail. What you got? You got nothing. So now that you've gotten a taste of the game's non-linear aspects, we're gonna call Emilio and challenge him personally. Emilio, ha! You ain't got nothing I'm scared of! Unlike the group races where we have to chase down a hook man and then follow them to the group race, when we call someone to challenge them head to head, we're simply teleported directly to the race and we only have to race one person. It's a bit easier. Yo, is that a car? It looks more like a trolley to me, yo. <laughs> So if you remember our very first group race, which was our second mandatory race, we had to race down a very straight pathway with one turn at the end. That's basically what this is, except we're only racing against one person this time instead of several. Now we can only make a couple of screw-ups because Emilio is going to be breathing down our back the entire time. But the only thing we really have to worry about is evading some very mild pedestrian traffic. And then one big turn to the left right here at the end. A lucky punk, yo, one lucky punk. You wanna race Emilio? Ha! You ain't got nothing I'm scared of! So now that we beat Emilio in a head-to-head -head race, we win the car that he raced in, and we have the option to change to it, but we're going to decide not to. We're going to keep racing in the taxi for now, for a reason that will become apparent shortly. Yo, is that a car? Looks more like a trolley to me, yo. So this race was intended to demonstrate uh, to you, the viewer, the necessity of changing cars at some point. I was intending to race this track flawlessly without making any mistakes, and Emilio would still win. This would demonstrate the need to change cars into something a bit faster if we wanted to win. But that's not quite how this worked out. Instead of both of us racing flawlessly, I race nearly flawlessly and... And Emilio makes an incredibly humorous mistake right here. 
He gets his stupid ass stuck between these trailers, which allows us to race right past him, and we gain such a huge lead that it's nearly impossible for him to catch up unless we mess up massively. So what was originally intended as a demonstration for the fact that you do need to change cars to complete the game, turned out to be a demonstration in one of my favorite facets of the game, how fallible the AI is and how prone they are to goofing up. It also demonstrates how gleefully rubber band free this AI is, because fuck rubber band AI, fuck it hard. A lucky punk, yo, one lucky punk. You wanna race Emilio? Ha! You ain't got nothing I'm scared of. So this time we are actually going to change cars, and we're going to change cars to the car we just won, the excellent, the excellent, look, I'm not Spanish or Mexican or anything that is not an incredibly white person, so we're just going to change cars to the second car we win from Emilio, is what I'm trying to say. This will be our first look at the garage, where we can see all the cars we've obtained and their stats, and the cars handle extremely differently in this game. If you're expecting to transition from one car to another smoothly, then I have some bad news for you. The cars are all optimized for different playstyles, so if you attempt to play a new car with an old playstyle and the car isn't suited for that playstyle, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening. Yo, is that a car? Looks more like a trolley to me, yo. So this is the first race that gave me some genuine trouble, and there are a couple distinct reasons for that. It's easy to get a lead here at the start though, you naturally seem to move faster than Emilio in this car. The first bit of tricky business comes after this next checkpoint where we have to make a cut across a small park. There are a lot of obstacles in the park, some of which can send us flying really high into the air. And you need to pick a pathway that transitions you safely into the road across from the park at a reasonable angle, so you don't smash into a building. And since we managed that without taking any head-on collisions or taking any turns that were too rough, we're back on a straightway where we're still ahead of Emilio. And now we reach the hard part. We're in Central Park, and we're fucked. There are countless pathways to the goal, which would be the green dot. We're going to take the same one Emilio takes, but if you're unaware which path Emilio takes, you can easily get lost during this final stretch and, and completely fuck yourself up. There's very little to guide you in the right direction. I let you warm, Papo, you know it. Yo, yo, again? With you in that? Ha! No way, Emilio's better than that. So after you win all three head-to-head -head races against a hookman and take all of their cars, they try to play it off like, a uh, like it's no big deal, like you didn't just kick their ass, which I think is pretty good. But now we've completed two of Emilio's group races, one of them which was mandatory at the start, and another one which we had to chase him down for, and we completed all of his head-to-head -head races, which means now there's only one final group race left for Emilio. And we're gonna head back into the garage to equip ourselves with our newly won car. And this car comes with a very important secondary game mechanic. But first I'm gonna teal this car all up. Gonna make it teal as hell. And I think it actually looks rather nice with the paint job he has on there. We're back in New York again, and Emilio is still on the map, but this is the last time we're going to see him on the map. After we chase him down and do his last group race, he will disappear. We will have 100%ed all of Emilio's races. It's a lot easier to catch him in this car because this is the best car he has to offer, and currently the best car available to us personally. So there are a couple of things I should explain while we're chasing Emilio down. The first of them is that due to this game's non-linear nature, you don't need a 100% every single hook man. The only thing technically necessary to progress the story are the group races, and if you complete all of the group races for two separate hook men, then the story will move forward. You can ignore the third hook man entirely, and you can of course choose which two hook men's group races you complete. We're just going to do all three, because I like this game. The head-to-head -head races are technically entirely optional. You don't technically have to race against the racers one-on-one -on -one and win their cars, but 
the game quickly becomes impossible if you don't, because you need better cars to win in the group races. But you can simply find out which Hookman's car set you like the best and go with that one, because even before you obtain a car you can see its stats in the menu. So it's perfectly possible to pick out which Hookman has the most desirable cars and only get their cars from the start. The third thing I need to point out is that our new car has Nitro Boosters, which makes catching up to uh, Hookman during these chase segments a lot easier, because as I said their acceleration speed is unreasonable. They go from 0 to 100 incredibly quickly, so you can use your Nitro to catch back up to them when they inevitably do this after smashing into a wall. We only have 3 Nitro Boosters in the current car, but there's a max of 5. Now that we have Emilio's best car, this race shouldn't be too hard at all. We're going to use one of our Nitro Boosters right here at the start to catch up to Emilio. Or at least get reasonably close to him so we can catch up to him when it matters around the corners. Like I said, my playstyle personally favors taking corners better than the AI, which is reasonably easy to do. The AI slows down a significant amount around corners, which means that if you take corners without slowing down too much yourself, you'll easily make it out ahead. Now, because of the specific strategy I use, I tend to pick cars that favor cornering and handling over speed and acceleration. This means that I'm very easy to take over on straight pathways, and this is what the Nitro Boosters are for. To keep the AI away from me, just long enough for me to reach the next corner and make up for any lost time by taking the corner nearly flawlessly. The inverse strategy is also completely valid. You can beef yourself up with a car that has great acceleration and top speed, so that way you can blaze down straightways but have a bit of trouble around corners. But generally I find you need to pick one of the two. You need to optimize yourself either for taking great corners or blazing down the straightways because it takes a long time to get a car that's reasonably good at both. Sadly, Emilio's cars aren't greatly optimized in either direction and are probably the weakest cars you could pick up early on in the game. But to balance that out, Emilio's races are also the easiest races in the game. And immediately after we're done with Emilio, we're gonna go ahead and shoot straight for my favorite cars in the game, straight for the uh, cars that are best optimized for handling and cornering. So that way I can put my strategy in full effect and I won't have to worry about changing how I play to suit cars I'm unfamiliar with. Yo, Papo, you're good. Yeah, you're real good, but you ain't the best. No, 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 you'll never take the chance. Try racing him. Huh. You'll find him cruising town. In spite of what Emilio said, the city champ won't appear until we clear out two separate sets of group races for two separate hookmen. So if we wanted to, we could go to a different Hookman and clear out their group races and then skip straight to the city champ, ignoring the third Hookman entirely. But as I said, we're going to do all three, and we're going to make a beeline for my favorite set of cars in the next video.